In this video, I'm going to cover random numbers and the parseInt function. Create a random number between 0 and 1 with math.random. Now this will create a number between 0 inclusive and 1 exclusive, meaning it could be 0, but it could never be 1. So if you look in the console, this is the random number that we got. And if you run every time I run that, I'm going to get a different number. Now if you want to make sure it's a whole number up to a certain number, you can multiply it by 20 or, or any number, and then you can round it down. So I'm going to do math.floor, and inside math.floor, we're going to do math.random times 20. I'm just going to put another parenthesis there. And we got 7. Now math.floor, math.random times 20 is going to give us a number between 0 and 19. Because remember, it's always rounding down. So we could round down to 0, but you're never going to quite get 20, so it's not going to, it can't round down to 20. It would always round down to 19. So this is between 0 and 19. If you want to generate a random number that falls between two specific numbers, and that doesn't necessarily start with 0, you can use a specific formula. Let me show you a function that uses the formula. Okay, so here's the random range function. We're going to pass in a min, we're going to pass in a max, and then we're going to return this. This is the formula here that we're going to use. It starts off the same as what we had up here. We have math.floor, math.random, and we're going to multiply by this thing. We're going to multiply by max minus min plus 1, and then to this, to this whole part right here, we're just going to add the minimum. So right here I'm calling the random range function, I'm passing in 1 and 9, so this should give us a number between 1 and 9, a random number between 1 and 9. So there's 4, every time I run this it's going to be another one, 6, and you can see it's never going to give us a number outside of that range. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the parseInt function. That just takes a string and converts it to a number, as long as the string can be converted to a number. So if I do int and I pass in this string 007 or 007 it's going to convert it to just the number 7. I'm just going to run that and you can see at the very end here 7. It's taking off the leading zeros and just converting it to a 7. If the first character cannot be converted to a string like T, let's see what happens there, it's going to give us NAN not a number. So this can be especially helpful when you're getting numbers from APIs or JSON that end up being a string, you can convert them to a number. Now you can also pass in a second argument, which would be the base of the number in the string. So if I have 11 here, but then I pass in the argument 2, we're going to convert this from base 2 to an integer that's in base 10. So if I run that, and you can see 3 because 1 1 in binary that's base 2 would equal 3. Well, thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe and remember use your code for good.